going to be a long-winded preacher this morning. I heard three hallelujahs. It is my final sermon of 2018, and the Lord has given to me a lot to share with you today. I'm going to try to unpack as much as I can, but also be sensitive to his leading and his prompting. Amen? John 14, I want to talk to you simply about back to the start, back to the start. Let's go ahead and get into his word today as we read verses 16 through 18. Let's go to 15. John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We can underline that first. Verse 16 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Father, would you, by the way of your Holy Spirit, help us to understand the words that are penned here by your disciple. Lord, I pray for the ability to convey and to communicate your holy word. I ask, O oh God, for a rich anointing. Father, would you give us ears to listen and hearts to receive what you have prepared in advance. I ask, O oh God, that at the proper time, it would come to pass in due season. Because your word is faithful, it does not return back to you void. And so, Lord, I pray that at the proclamation, they would be followed by a demonstration of your word. In season and in alignment with your word. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise in Jesus' matchless name. Amen, amen. and amen. I want to open up by just sharing with you briefly some convictions I have about people that are worshiping the creation rather than the creator. So oftentimes people navigate to the things that God gives and they start to worship the creation, forgetting about where the gift or the promise or the blessing has originated from, and that is the Lord. We take our eyes off of him so easily and so quickly because we've received what we perceive to be the blessing of the Lord, and now we worship the creation rather than the creator. We're living in a world today where if you change a term, you can change the reality. Because it comes cliche. And if you see or hear someone that is praying to the universe, then you run the risk of picking up a language. God did not want Israel hanging out with heathen nations because he didn't want them to adopt to the concepts of the heathens. So he said, don't touch them. Don't go near them. Don't adopt to their lifestyle. Have you ever said something that wasn't something that you would normally say, but you picked up a language from somebody else? It's something that your friend would say. It's something that your coworker would say. It's something that your mother would say. It's something that your father would say. And all of a sudden, you're incorporating this language into your language. God wants you to resist the temptation to adopt to the language of the world aligned with its idiosyncrasies that we see all over the place. You see, the enemy is stealing relationship with you because, listen, you can't have relationship with the universe. You can't have relationship with wooden and carved images. Romans 1 lays down a strong and formidable case against the warning of worshiping creation rather than the creator and God said that you should be able to see the creation and recognize the God who created it 
people have come to worship the things God gives rather than the giver of the things. See, the creation is something that God gave you. It is a gift that God has given to us, the creation. And it's dangerous for us to make an idol out of a blessing. It's going to be real tight in here today. I'm just going to warn you right now. All right? We're ending this year strong because we want to start fresh. Amen. Amen? I believe you can handle this word. You can appreciate it because you don't have to worship it. God is jealous, and he will never take second place. And so if giving your car, if him giving you a car meaning is going to mean that you're going to stay home on Sunday to wax it, guess what? He's not going to give you the car. All right? <laughs> Maybe we ought to go back to where we came from so that we can worship him in a pure way. The more blessing God pours out on you, the more you have to cast it down so that you still know the difference between the creation and the creator. We get the blessing, we put it down right at his feet. You never hold the blessing up above your head because it'll block the flow of his blessing from continuing on in your life. You see, God wants intimacy with you and me. If we see him as power or energy, you can't have a relationship with force and might. Your God has a personality. Your God has ways. Your God responds emotionally. He weeps. He dances. Do you know that your God dances around the throne? He dances around the throne. He changes his mind based on how you pray. Whoa. He was warning me to do this and to turn from this and warning me and, and justice said that I'm going to have to pay for this. But mercy swooped in and said, no, here's my mercy. And so God changed his mind. You don't believe me? Look at Hezekiah. Hezekiah was praying, and God gave him another 15 years after that. God changed his mind when I should have been dead 18 years ago, but today I stand because there was a change in his mind. When I had done all that I knew what to do and how to ruin life, the life giver came in, he stepped in, and he said, here's an additional 18 years, and I'm on borrowed time right now. I wish we would get that concept. We're on borrowed time. This is borrowed time. The crack should have killed me, but God changed his mind. The, the wreck should have took me out, but God changed his mind. The time we have from God is a favor. It's a favor. Do you know how much you would praise God if you really knew that time was a favor? Do you know that what you wouldn't let bother you, who couldn't get you on your nerves, what you wouldn't be worried about when you knew you were living on borrowed time, things that used to worry you, guess what? Heading into this new year, not going to worry you anymore. Your God is a he. Hello? He is a he. He is not a cathedral. He is not a temple. He is not a church. He is not a building. He is so passionate about you. You can't have a relationship with a building. You can't have a relationship with brick and mortar. You can't have a relationship with denomination. You cannot have a relationship with idea. You cannot have a relationship with doctrine. Some people are highly spiritual, have a high theology, and they will hammer you with a doctrine about God rather than teaching you that the God became like us. He became like us. God gave his body for us. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. They beat him with a cat of nine tails until his entrails were falling out. They pulled his beard. Blood was his clothing. 
Naked on the cross, he hung for you. Nails between both hands, one nail between both his feet. When we look at the cross, we call it agony. When we look at the cross, we call it pain. When we look at the cross, we call it brutal. When we look at the cross, we call it murder. But when he looks at the cross, he calls it passion. I was given my body to a bride, he said all along. So God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't just love us. He so loved us. He's the lover of your soul. Nobody in this place should ever again say that they don't have anybody that loves them. God so loved you that he died for you. He's the one that opens doors for you. He's the one that fights off enemies for you. He's the one that you have as the best lover. He's an extreme lover. He created you unto his pleasure. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He gave you everything that you need to give him everything that he needs. God is speaking, God. He talks to you. He speaks to you. He has a mouth. He gave you a mouth so you can speak back to him and worship him and praise him and adore him and thank him. Come on and lift your voice unto the Lord right now. Everybody in this place needs a place. Where are you going to meet him at? Love had to express itself. It cannot hide itself. All lovers need a place. Where are we going to meet him at? That's what the garden was really all about. He created it so that we could have a place. The garden. The garden. The garden was to be that meeting place. God doesn't want you wandering all over the world trying to find him. That was the place. The garden is a spot where you and him got together and it became an affectionate place. This is the place where humanity and divinity originally hooked up. When sin came in, we lost our place. We lost it. That's why they were driven out of the garden. The voice of the Lord walked around in the cool of the day. Adam! Where are you, Adam? Adam! Where are you? You were supposed to meet me here, Adam. Adam! This was the place. Where are you? You said you were going to show up. Where are you? You see, what's interesting to me about this portion of Scripture is that We find God looking for Adam, not Adam looking for God. Where are you, Adam? And then we hear, here I am, Lord. I heard your voice, and I was afraid. I was naked, and I hid myself. I heard, I hid, I was afraid. I heard, I hid, and I was afraid. Whenever you see people hiding themselves, they're afraid. The problem with the fig leaves is this, is the fig leaves had to be pulled in order to be sown. You separated it from its life source, and that's the same thing with you. You have separated me, and it doesn't matter if the leaves took, are turning green, or look green right now. The reality is that it's withering because it lost its relationship from its life source. I'm going to preach to you this morning. Because the fig leaves had relationship so long as as it was connected. But when he pulled on it and it lost its connection, it lost its relationship. And in order for it to become an apron for the man to wear, he had to pull it away from that place. Much like when Adam pulled away from God, both of them now were withering. Man was withering because it pulled away and the fig leaves are withering. Because it pulled away. And God said, no, 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 no. That's not okay. That's not the way that it needs to be. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. 
And he went out and he took the bloody skins of an animal and he covered man and made that his covering. I don't know who's naked. I don't know who's afraid. I don't know who's hiding themselves. But I want you to know that out of this, he's got you covered. He's got you covered. I know your shame, but I got you covered. I know you're wrong, but I got you covered. I know your secret, but I got you covered. I know what you're afraid of, but I got you covered. Don't let your fear cause the intimacy to be put off. I've got you covered. You can't cover yourself. Only the blood can cover you. Only the blood can cover you. So the first meeting spot we have is the garden. The second meeting place we have is 2,500 years later in the wilderness when we hear Pharaoh, the voice going, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. The tabernacle was up in the wilderness as a meeting place. And what the tabernacle is in the wilderness, the garden was right there. Eden was in the world. It's a meeting place. That's why it is in the middle of the camp and the tribes are circling the tabernacle. And God was saying, I won't be happy until I am the center of your life. So he put everything in the center and everything else around it so that you would understand that he needs to be the center of your life. He doesn't just want to be your Sunday date. He wants to be your lover. He wants to be intimate with you. Everything else has got to wrap around him. Everything else that you involve your life around has got to be centered on him. Everything that you participate in has got to come around him. So we've seen the garden and we've seen the tabernacle. Now we're going to get into the text. God said, I'm going to give you the ultimate meeting spot. So he came down inside the womb of Mary that was kin to him. And the next place I'm going to meet you is going to be in Jesus. It's going to be in Jesus. Jesus is my meeting place. Hello. Jesus is my meeting place. He is the place where God meets man. Humanity meets divinity. He is the place of the hookup, the connection. He is the place of the union, the fellowship. And if I am in him, in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new creature. The meeting place was leaving, and he was going away. He was going away in his ascension. He was going away from a people that took him serious. For three and a half years, they did everything together. And now he says, bye-bye, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. The text jumps right into a goodbye speech. This is his farewell speech. Transitions are always tough, aren't they? Change is always difficult. But he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray to the Father. And he's going to send you another comforter. That he may abide with you tomorrow. That he might abide with you for a week. No, that he might abide with you forever. For the next several moments, I want to talk to you about the praying son and the giving father. The comforter who the world cannot receive because they do not know him. But guess what? You know him. The word is a progressive word. We are still learning him. I've been teaching this gospel for 15 years, and I'm still learning about him. God is much bigger than anything you ever thought of or even imagined. Islam teaches that their religion enters in right here. The moment that Jesus went into the ascension, that this ended Jesus' ministry, his ascension right there, and that the next one to come was going to be Muhammad. But that's not who's coming. That was not the one that was coming because Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Whatever is coming was going to come quickly. They weren't going to have to wait too long. Then it will be of the same kind. 
it will be of the same kind. He said, I had been with you, but I'm going to be, help me preach, in you. So those of us that have lost relatives, death hurts. And you think about how much you're going to miss them and how long it's going to take to grieve. The reality is that it takes a while for us to grieve. But when the grief starts to back away, you begin to learn that it is gone from being with you, but not gone from being in you. The conversations that you used to have sitting in a car or a living room and the voice that you heard as if you're sitting in the same room now have left you, but they have not left you or abandoned you because they're still in you. You can still hear the voice clearly. You can still hear your mother's voice, your father's voice. You can still hear your sibling's voice as if they are still there with you. Why? Because the voice is in you. Oh my gosh, that sounds like my mother's voice. Oh my gosh, that sounds like my father's voice. Why? Because it just took up another way. Jesus says, I was with you but I'm going to be in you. The text is teaching us about the changing of the guard. His ministry was to be with us, but when his relief came, he was to be in us, a well of water springing up within us. When you go into the funeral, he will be with you. When you go into your interview, he will be with you. When you go into your office, he will be with you. When you go into that conversation, he will be with you. When you go into that family reunion, he will be with you. When you go into that church, he will be with you. You will never be there by yourself. He will talk in you. He will lift you up. He will heal you. He will prosper you inside before outside. He will heal you in your soul first and then your body. There is a spirit component to this. Free in your spirit before freedom comes to your life. I'm here today because he prayed for me. Jesus prayed for me. The Bible tells us that he is an intercessor. When you don't even know how to pray, there's a spirit, there's Jesus interceding for you before the Father. He is your intercessor. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness nor shadow during it. All of it comes from the giving Father. The, that came from the Father. That voice came from the Father. That chair came from the Father. That thought came from the Father. That creation came from the Father. The giving Father as a result of the praying Son. What does he say? He's going to send us another comforter. He says, I'm going to give it to you, but it's going to be okay because he's going to give us another comforter. The word another in the Greek is alos. Say that, alos. Alos. It means another of the same kind. Alos. I've heard this word before. Maybe it was on CBS when they were talking about lotion. Alos, aloe, it's a plant that looks like this. It's a plant that alos is extracted from. The reason why it is used in lotion is because the skin cells of the plant have a similar cell to the skin. So it is another of the same kind. And so when Jesus says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another of the same kind, he says, I'm going to be, it's going to be me in another Way We are getting ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He says he will give us another comforter. He will give to us another comforter. Babe, come here. He will give to us another comforter. We think of comfort like this. This is how we think of comfort. Right? You're comforting, you're consoling, you're hugging, you're holding on. Comforting during times of difficulty, of loss, of tragedy, of pain, of suffering. Comforting. But that's not what he says. Comforting the way that we intend it to be read in Scripture is that the Holy Spirit will come alongside of you to help you. He will comfort you in this. 
Parakletos is the name from the Greek word, which means to stand alongside to help. On the loading dock, when you have something that cannot be lifted, there is something that is called the paraclete. The paraclete makes you lift stuff that you cannot lift because it, it is, it's a place that you need leverage from. You cannot lift it in your own strength. So you grab hold of the chain and you hook it up to the paraclete. You can lift it a whole lot easier because you have assistance. You have help that has come a long way. This is the way the Holy Ghost comes in. When something is too heavy for you, the Holy Spirit comes along and he lifts you up. You better pay attention in this next year because some of the things that you will be exposed to, you're not going to have the strength to do it in your own. You're going to need another of the same kind to lift you up in the time of battle. I can't do this alone. I don't have enough strength for this. I am too weak for this. But, Lord, I'm calling on you. When you get into that fight, he's going to fight with you. When you run out of strength, that's when he's going to show up. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to come right alongside of you, just like Elijah. When God said, the journey's too difficult for you, rise up and eat. You need to eat in order to sustain yourself. Some of you need to get the paraclete deep down inside of you. It's not going to come because of the money. It's not going to come because of the smarts. It's not going to come because of the education. It's not going to come because of the training. It's simply going to become because of the intimacy. The intimacy that you share with him. Let everybody else play games. Let them play games. Let them play politics. Let them play tricks. God said, if you meet me in the garden, I will give you strength for the journey. If you meet me in the garden, it will make you stronger. He's going to help you with this. Say, he's going to help me with this. Say it again, he's going to help me with this. Don't pull in. The reason why he makes all things new is so that you don't have to pull, pull into a new season things that you've been holding on to in a previous season. Let it go. Don't bring that same baggage into this next year. Leave it. Gossip, bad relationships, just leave it at his feet. Don't entertain it. Keep your eyes on Jesus, and the paracletos will come alongside of you and help you as a comforter along the way. 2019, don't give up. Do not give up. Call on the Holy Ghost power. He stands beside you to help you in your time of need. The Holy Spirit told me to get the people ready. Get them ready. He told me to tell you to take your eyes off of it and put yourself in a place where you see him. Stop talking about how bad it is, how tough it is, how rough it is. I'm here to tell you to put your eyes on him. Eyes on him. Put your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. You see, the more you worship and the more you praise, the more you go into your secret place, the alos paracletos will give you strength that you never had. The alos parakletos will give you strength that you never had. It's too big for you. It's too wide for you. It's too difficult for you. It's too complicated for you. But you got help. You got help. To those of you that feel exhausted, I got news for you. You are not the ever ready buddy. Not the energizer bunny. The ever-ready buddy, and you know what I'm talking about. People call you for all types of emergencies. Everyone calling you for every situation, every crisis, every circumstance, and you say, Lord, I can't keep on going like this. He's going to give you help. The strength is going to come, not through exercise but it's going to come through intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The problem is that we have forgotten how to be intimate. People go to church, but they don't come to him. 
If your strength is coming through intimacy, you should be able to measure your ability to be intimate. You can't just worship him at church. What is intimacy? Intimacy is you're in the worship service, but you don't worship, and that's because we typically see the value of winning more than we value the intimacy. You look at the book, but you don't feed yourself the word. You want the power, but you don't see the value of intimacy. It's good that people show up for the word. But the breakthrough in your life comes through worship and praise. It's good that people straggle in 10, 15 minutes late because they think, yeah, I'll get there at the end of worship. But listen, the reason why that many people are still struggling with the same things that they're struggling with is because they're not getting the breakthrough they need during worship and praise. Worship and praise brings breakthrough. The word brings transformation. Amen? You need to be a part of worship and praise as much as you are part of the word of God. Amen? We often come to God for what we want, but I'm trying to tell you what he wants. He wants your whole heart. He's been looking for a people, and he's crying out to you, where are you? Don't hide yourself from me. Where are you? Don't cover yourself with fig leaves. Where are you, Adam? Adam, where are you? I'm longing to meet with you in this place. I'm longing to be with you in this place. When was the last time... Let me just throw it out there. When was the last time you worshipped and you forgot where you were? When you worshipped and your eyes were swollen shut because you're weeping in his presence, overcome by his glory, overshadowed by his presence in your life. When was the last time you worshipped until it didn't matter what people thought about you and it didn't matter what they said about you? Your help is in your ability to be intimate with Jesus. But so many have become a master of hiding our hearts, and our hearts is really all he wants. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Life teaches you how to hide your heart. Life teaches you how to hide your heart. You say, how does that happen? Well, if something goes critically wrong, and you find yourself not wanting to be in the presence of God, but trying to run from the very thing that can help you, your paracletos can help you, then you're going in the wrong direction. That pain, that struggle, that difficulty is meant to drive you to be more intimate with him. Not away from his presence, but into his presence. That's where the true test of your heart Will be. This is going to be a season where true worshipers are going to see breakthroughs. People who can get into his presence and get lost in his glory. This is going to be a year of the paracletos. The Holy Ghost helper is coming. He's going to be your help. He's going to be your leverage. He's going to be your confidence. And you're going to worship him. And he's going to give you favor with man. He's going to give you favor with man. You have to worship God until he makes your enemies, enemies your footstool. You have to worship God until your blood pressure gets back down to normal. You have to worship God until you get the breakthrough, until all freedom comes to your life, healing comes to your body. Let's just try everything in the house right now. Just start to lift your voice unto the Lord. Just start to lift your voice unto the Lord. No matter what season you're in right now, just lift your voice unto him. He's your paracletos. He's your helper. He comes in the time of trouble and in the time of need. Come on and lift your voice unto him right now. Lift your voice unto him. If you're listening by the internet, I don't care if you're driving your car and you look like a fool, raise your voice unto the Lord right now. If you're sitting in your room right now with your children, your parents, your husband, your wife, lift your voice unto the Lord right now. Your paracletos is coming in right now. He's coming in like a flood. He's coming into your life right now in such a powerful way. To remind you that he's in control. He's your comforter. He's your counselor. He's your warrior. He's your protector. He's your shield. He's your buckler. He's your provider. He is all that you need. All that you need is in him. All that you desire is in him. Come on and lift your voice unto the Lord. Praise him. Worship him. Give him your glory. Open your heart right now and get real with Jesus. Open your heart. Get real with him right now. Pour out your heart before the Lord. Open it up. This is the last year of 2018. This might be our last time together. Come on and lift your voice unto the Lord. 
Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Esteem him. He's worthy of it all. Come on. Come on. Don't stop. You're just getting started. Worship him. Worship him. Open your heart. Don't hide it. It's not worth it. He knows where you are. He's calling out to you right now. He's calling out to your heart right now. The Allos Paracletus is coming right now into your life. Come on, let's worship for a minute. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy of it all, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 